I'm not overly surprised. You could see it was going to go poorly when we left, whenever we left. It is, it's, it's the, the rule without law, right? It's the de-evolution of society into your most base survival instincts. At some point, you got to walk away. And that we were going to leave, right? You asked, was pulling troops out the right decision earlier? It's the inevitable decision. Unless we are going to occupy, colonize, and breed our American culture into Afghanistan, at some point we're leaving. Um, it just took us 20 years. Spent 12 years in the Army, privileged to lead the sons and daughters of America. My last assignment before getting out and entering into the civilian world is as a, I spent 2013, 2014 in Afghanistan. The original mission was to take National Guard Reserve and active component soldiers and go to Afghanistan and try and train the local national police forces to a level of legitimacy that forced the rule of law in support of the Afghanistan government. When we got there, that plan went out the window. It was, it was all kinds of things, right? Like, I mean, it was blowing up unexploded ordnance. There was some counter narcotics, counter human smuggling component. Taking thin metal containers and smashing them with the long-term hope of preventing them from becoming shrapnel or IEDs. It was, it was a task that needed to be accomplished. And so, you know, we leaned in and, and we did it, but that was the chaos of Afghanistan embodied. Taliban fighters behind uh, the desk. I thought it would be a more organized withdrawal. I think to a certain extent, there's some closure in it. Like it's done. It's not, it's not ending well, but it's done. We're leaving. It's over, right? If the embassy has fallen, if Kandahar and Kabul airfield are given up, it's over. Um, and we can then maybe start moving on to something else. No, I don't think we can just definitively blame the Biden presidency for this. The sun's got to go down at some point, right? Like it has to set. We had to leave Afghanistan. Six, five, got it. I, I, I can remember distinctly when we invaded Iraq, looking over to your buddies and be like, we are making history right now. Like they're going to tell stories about an air assault from Karbala, Najaf, Baghdad, up to Mosul. But in Afghanistan, never once had that feeling. Hey. We're here, and we need to be here because it'll go sh if we're not. But we ain't making history. You know, we're just here. You're just doing your time. You're, you're doing your prison sentence. You're one year in, and then you get out. That was a lot of my experience, treading water with your earlobes. I, I can't control the national election. I can't fix... Um, some of the redundancies and bureaucracy in, in the government of Afghanistan, but I can get this bridge open so that the people can get to and from and go across the river without drowning or flipping over their donkey carts or crashing their, you know, Toyota Hiluxes into the river. Absorbing it and watching it as it develops, you know, I'm, I'm as, as disappointed as I am now, I'm as I'm that level of interested to see what happens next, right? Is it going to be the bloodbath? Or were we there unnecessarily? I think my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Kalicki, would say that nobody wins a fight. Did we win this war? Did we accomplish strategic objectives? Yes. Did we hold on to Afghanistan long term and establish permanent democracy? No. So did anybody win? Um, the legacy remains to be written, right? There's many a dollar and many a soldier sacrificed to this altar of conflict, but what is the, the historical significance? I don't know. Does that take another 10 years to figure it out? Do we end up going back or not? I don't know. Um, this is a chapter. It's not the, the conclusion.